Hello and welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Today is April 15th, 2020, and thank you for joining me for this weekly podcast as we take a look at the astrological energies over the next week. We have a very energizing week underway, and I hope you've been feeling that. Uh, we finally have Mercury out of Pisces. Mercury is now in Aries, really bringing in a thrust of beginnings, that sense of new possibilities, new starts. It's very energizing in terms of what you want to do next. And this Mercury is making some beautiful aspects to Venus in Gemini and Mars in Aquarius. So we have a lovely harmony here over the next week as the three personal planets, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, are all doing a very lovely dance. It's a trifecta of energies that are working together and they are helping us move forward forward. And I truly hope you're feeling this in some area of your life. I know we can all use it right now. We're all ready for the new beginnings, the get outside, the get get going in life again. And you could feel that as we move through the middle of April here. So it's a very encouraging sign when we have a positive connection between the three personal planets and it signals that the movement is finally happening even if it's slow it could be gaining momentum and so I hope you're feeling that I hope you're feeling a new perhaps motivation or inspiration of what you want to do next where you want to go next or even an understanding of what really truly matters to you now as the world has been shut down, as our lives have come to a standstill, as we've had limitations around what we can do in a day, it brings us back to center. It brings us back to what is essential in my life. What do I want to put my time and energy towards? What is satisfying? What is rewarding? What really brings me joy and happiness? What inspires me? What motivates me? You can use this time to get clearer on yourself. And the sun is still in Aries. As I do this show, the sun is at 26 degrees of Aries. And it's reminding you that even though you have your personality, you have your sense of self, you can go higher with that and connect it to your soul's consciousness. The soul consciousness energy is where we are everything and nothing, no thing. It's where we don't have an identity but it supports us in the identity we hold in this lifetime. So the sun in Aries is going to complete its journey over the next few days and enter Taurus on April 19th. And that actually happens at 10.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 19th. So as the sun completes its journey through Aries, what have you learned about yourself that you're ready to embrace? This could be a new part of you that's emerging. This could be a new start in your life. This could be a new understanding of what you want, who you are, what matters to you. This is the energy of really understanding the power and force of your energy field and allowing that to take you forward. Aries is an initiating energy. And not only do we have the sun in Aries right now, we have Mercury in Aries and Chiron in Aries. So three planets in Aries saying, who are you now? What excites you? What motivates you? Aries is a fire sign. It is about the beginnings that inspire us, that get us going. And we look at it from the consciousness of our soul, okay? So there's something coming through around what you could feel guided to do because of that call of your soul, because of an understanding of what's bigger than you that really matters to you now. And I also feel that there is this infusion of energy in our auras, that we're being infused, and I'm seeing it as a, uh, like a flushing out of whatever was stagnant or stuck or expired. The Aries energy brings in the new starts, the new energetic inspirations. I also feel it as some very fresh downloads coming through that are helping you see with greater clarity what is essential at this time. And I'm feeling too like it's understanding at a deeper level that there are more parts of you that are ready to emerge now 
that could not have been birthed any sooner. And that's part of the energetic time frame that we're in, where uh, there's things that would be supporting the energy now that it wasn't supported earlier. So we're supposed to be in this place of beginner's mind, uh, the curiosity, uh, the sense of optimism of what could happen, and kind of just being open to the adventure, open to what might unfold and what lies ahead. The Aries energy can be naive in that way of, okay, anything goes, let's just see what happens. Uh, But there is something coming through that I feel is really beautiful. And now they're showing me that part of what's coming through, oh, so awesome. These are new 5D codes, like 5D downloads. So this is new fifth dimensional and higher energies that people can now connect and tap into that were not available previously. You know, it had to be this cycle. This cycle in the astrological process is where this energy can come through. And that's part of the energizing force at this time. The energy of how far you've come, how much you've healed, what you've learned, how you've grown. Part of the Aries journey too is a gut instinct. And that is what you're meant to trust. So it's really trusting what you feel instantly, trusting your body's messages, trusting what your body consciousness is telling you. And it feels like that's something they're showing me that's yet another tool that we're meant to use as we ride through 2020 and move into the years ahead. So we're taking with us a new dialogue, a new connection to our body, to trusting what our body says, what our body needs, what our body does, knowing that there is a great intelligence within us that's not simply in the brain. And they're showing me this as like an outline or a silhouette of the body and how it's it's mapped with huge intelligence in every cell and that that's part of what we're tapping into. So it's sort of like those days when you only want to do nothing. You know, you're lying on the couch or you can't get moving on something that you thought you'd get done. Conversely, it's also the days when you are unstoppable and you are organizing everything and you're doing this and doing that and taking care of all of these things. It's like the body is like really responding and really activated by the energies. So we are now tapped in to a different frequency, a different frequency And they're showing me that it comes from the sun. So the sun has changed in its consciousness as well, which makes perfect sense because everything in the galaxy is in relationship with everything else. And as the energies in our solar system flex and change, then the sun would feel that too. And so basically what I'm feeling are that there's these new neutrinos coming from the sun and they're coming from the sun with a new level of consciousness and that's what we're feeling and that's what we're picking up on is that sense of renewal and our bodies are responding in a whole new way so go easy on yourself Um, I do feel like there's a lot of energy over this next week but that is of course individual for each person how they feel that and process that Uh, the energetics feel very inspired almost like that sense of things really progressing and moving along you can get more done in a day than you thought you could or you start the day with a to-do list and you're done with it by by noon i mean it feels like there's a lot here that's moving us forward and they're showing me that it's a bit like stretching in a new outfit where they're showing me a spacesuit. Um, you put on a spacesuit and then you're like, how does this thing work? And what does this feel like? And can I do this? And can I do that? And it's basically getting comfortable in our skin at a cellular level that is also supplying us with the energy and support to do what we need to do in a whole new way. And this feels like a very cool advancement. Um, where you could have the sense that you know your body better than ever before. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to the messages, the feelings, the information, the senses that are coming through, uh, because part of this Aries journey is the beginning point for the next 12 months, but also a beginning point in knowing what you're capable of now. I'm seeing that the sun is fired up 
with this new energy. Uh, that's the visual I'm getting is that there's this sense of bigger. It's like the light of the sun, but the force of the sun. And so they're showing me that there is a lot more energy coming in for a lot of people who have done a lot of work, but who are very conscious and aware. Okay, so this is really working with some people. And then they're showing me a very clear split. Okay, a very clear split in those who are having this experience and those who are feeling very heavy, very heavy in their body, in their life, and they're very enmeshed in the 3D physical world experience. And there is a heaviness that they're feeling that they don't understand. But please understand that everyone is what I believe. Everyone is loved by the universe no matter where they're at, exactly where they're at. So what I'm seeing is that there's a slowdown happening for some people. You know, their, their life, our lives have slowed down, right? But for some people, the energies are really intense and heavy because it's like coming to the end of a railroad track and you realize how miserable you are, how unhappy you are, what you've done that you no longer want to do, uh, what is not related to who you are, or like you made all this money, but for what, what does it mean? Or you own these possessions, you have the cars, the, you know, the right labels in your clothing, whatever. It's like a very, it, it's a different level of consciousness that is based on uh, the, the programming and belief systems of the 3D uh, value system. Well, the value system of the globe is changing. And that's part of the big energy over this next week is that people are experiencing in a, in a very interesting way, a sense of discomfort about their lives. Like this is not what I want because it's almost like there was this autopilot, right? Where, you know, you drop the kids off at school and you go to work and you have your colleagues and you um, go to lunch or you go to meetings and you have your, your, your dinner or your happy hour and you come home. And it's so clear that we haven't had any distractions that we thought were our lives. Okay, so it's kind of like pulling back the curtain, removing all the distractions, removing everything that we thought life was. And there's this heaviness. I'm showing it as a split in consciousness. Um, there could be other ways to describe it, but I'm seeing it as a split in consciousness. And like the pressure is increasing for people who are ready to awaken next. And they're actually making a choice around what they want to awaken to or if they want to stay on the path that they are comfortable with and they don't want to embark on anything new and different. So I'm feeling like there is a lot happening that is pushing people to face some truths about their lives. And of course, there's truths about the world that are coming up right now as well. But I feel like what we're supposed to be aware of is, of course, our own energy, our own choices, our own potentials and possibilities. And to, okay, so they're showing me a visual. That's why I'm talking slowly. And I realize this is a podcast and I don't want to have any dead air. But what they're showing me is that there's going to be sp further splits in consciousness after this intense phase is over. And people are going to emerge uh, from a cocoon, if you will, and be ready for the next part of their life, the next part of their journey. And then there's going to be those who fight to keep what is or what was. And what they're showing me is that the more that you're comfortable in your own physical self, in your aura, in your truth, and in what you know is best for you, that energy won't intrude on you. It won't affect you. And know that Many people have to learn through increasing hardship or through increasing challenges. That could be a soul's choice or a soul's lesson. For example, that could be something that they have endured through every lifetime. That could be just the way that they grow. And it's very important to not see anyone as a victim 
and to see them at a place of soul power. And that doesn't mean they're consciously aware of it, but it will help you detach. Uh, it will help you remain in your power uh, to not overextend where your power or your energy is not needed or not welcomed and to honor what is necessary for each being. And that's part of what we are urged to practice right now is the personal choices that we do have power over without diminishing or diluting your light or energy to make anyone else comfortable. So keep that in mind as, especially over the next week, uh, because I'm there's shakeups coming and you know, that's just 2020 in general. We're going to have many shakeups. Um, in fact, we're going to have many shakeups over the next five years. So that's kind of the new game here is how we can maintain our energy and stay in that place of higher consciousness that supports us and supports others as well. So the sun will finish up its time in Aries and move into Taurus on April 19th. Now this transition from Aries to Taurus is one of solidification. In Aries, we begin something. It's new, it's fresh, it is uh, energy of what calls to you next. Then we move into Taurus, which is the reality check and practical matters of what we wanna create. Aries can be very inspired to start five different things. Then the Taurus energy comes in and that's where you determine if it has legs, if it's grounded, if it's needed, if it's worth the time, if it's worth the money. So Taurus is an earth sign, the first earth sign. It is a feminine energy and it is a fixed sign. So whatever we begin in Aries gets tested in Taurus and we look at what can stay or what can go. Because in Taurus, we assess things in a very practical way and we want to check in if this is really in alignment with what you value, with what matters to you. You know, it's like going into a store. Remember that? Remember when you could go into a clothing store and you could look at all the clothing that the store would have on display. And of course, many sizes, colors, styles, fashions, and maybe something you would like, but would you want to spend that much money on it? Or maybe you like something, but you're not sure if it really is something you would want to wear or choose. So that's basically in a very simple way, what Taurus is showing us. What are we gonna financially commit to? What is in alignment with what you like and what you want? Uh, what is calling to you energetically and what is not? And where is it going to show up in your real life? You know, how does it fit in? Where does it go? Do you want it to take up space in your home or in your closet or not? For everything that the fire signs get started or initiate, so the fire signs being Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, they're all about what lights you up, what motivates you. Well, they're always followed by an earth sign, which is practical, grounding, and has limitations. There's limitations with every earth sign. So this is where we meet with reality, we get that reality check, and it will show you what's really necessary. So as we move into Taurus season, we see what's necessary in our lives and suffice to say, we've been having that reality check for the past month because that energy is also showing up through Uranus in Taurus. So Uranus in Taurus has been shaking the foundations of our life. It's been shaking our value systems, shaking up our finances, uh, showing us where we have resources and where we do not. The last time that Uranus was in Taurus, was back in the 1930s. Uh, it was also during the depression where we needed to ration food. Well, look what's happened again. Here we are rationing food in the grocery stores, limiting what's available, ensuring that the supply chain uh, is still moving through, that we still have the food we need, etc. So it's shaking up our resources and we're looking at, okay, well, what is essential? What do I need for myself, for my family? What matters and what does not? So this also brings up how we spend our money. And because Taurus is the first money sign, it is about how we create 
financial stability for ourselves in our lives. It's the money you own. It's what's in your savings account, what's in your checking account. It's what you possess and take in. And the deeper foundational energy of Taurus is about value, your personal value, what you have determined you are worth in all areas of your life. And that isn't just a monetary uh, evaluation. That's basically determining how much you want people to value you in relationships, how you want them to respect you, how they want you, how you want them to honor you. All of that is determined through Taurus because you are now setting the foundation, the energetic foundation of self-love in your life. So Aries begins the human experience. It says, this is me, this is my body, Who here I am. And then Taurus provides that foundation of I am lovable, I am valuable, I am respect worthy. Um, it's, it's understanding your worth as an individual human and then how that will show up in all areas of your life. So the sun moves into Taurus and it slows down that Aries fire. It slows down, we go slower and we start to observe. Taurus can be very calm. It likes the beautiful things in life. It likes good food, uh, good craft beer, uh, beautiful adornments, uh, the right clothes, a cool car. Uh, Taurus is, again, what we possess and what we buy. It's about how we can create and sustain a good life for ourselves uh, simply because we know we're worth it. So we come up to meet our self-love and self-worth issues as the sun travels through Taurus. And we get an opportunity to solidify these parts of our lives. Now, heads up, that solidification isn't happening right away. That's because the sun enters Taurus, and then when it gets to one degree, it makes a square to Saturn in Aquarius at one degree. Whenever the sun squares Saturn, there's typically some type of standstill and turning point. There's a shift. There could be a pressure that has been building. Uh, the Saturn energy is about timing, maturity, uh, what is the right commitment to make, what we need to do that is wise, that is responsible, that is important. And with Saturn in Aquarius, it's for the future. Uh, what is your future commitments? Uh, what does this look like? How does this work with more people? How does this work in your world? So bigger questions come up, and those bigger questions are about, well, where are you going? Where are you going next? What's the next dream? What's the next vision? And that sun in Taurus that squares Saturn in Aquarius, and this is on April 21st, by the way, April 21st, um, this is where that energy probably requires you to stop and look at what matters to you now. What is essential in your life? Considering how far you've come, what you've experienced and what you've done, this is the energy of a turning point. Uh, a turning point in a life direction, a turning point in what matters to you. Uh, there could be something that is challenged. Um, this is especially true if you have any planets or points at one degree of the, of the fixed signs. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. Uh, you are undergoing a big life transformation. Uh, it could feel like it's outside of your power, that it's not of your choosing, but that it's actually helping you, helping you remember who you are. Remember who you are. Remember the values that you came in with that maybe got lost along the way or got put on the back burner or pushed aside. Uh, there's something here about remembrance there's also something here about being ready for the long-term, a long-term goal, a long-term outcome, um, something being established or set up that takes you down a new path. So this energy is quite big and it can show up as frustration. You know, you want something to happen and it's not happening yet. Uh, again, Saturn is about timing. And so Saturn says, okay, it's not time, but it will be time later. Uh, so Conserve your energy, conserve what is important to you, and don't waste your resources. 
Don't waste your resources if you don't need to. So then what happens that's quite interesting is we have a Taurus new moon on April 22nd. And so we just had the sun squaring Saturn April 21st. Then the Taurus new moon is at three degrees. And this is the energy of what seeds do you want to plant? What seeds do you want to plant and grow? It is a beautiful time to set an intention for a long-term goal, for what you want to harvest in the years ahead, and for what matters to you that you're willing to commit to and work for. Now, there's something called a victory garden, and I don't know if you've heard about this, but victory gardens were planted during uh, both World War I and World War II, and they were planted to help reduce pressure on the food supply uh, to ensure that there would be enough food to send to the troops, uh, but that there would be more people who were self-reliant at home. And so the victory garden was basically a civil endeavor to grow your own food supply and of course to spend less money, to eat better, and to have that sense of maintaining your energy during a war. So the Victory Gardens were not only used for practical purposes, but they also had an energetic purpose, that sense of satisfaction at watching something grow, that sense of purpose where every day you go water and prune and take care of the vegetables, the fruits, the plants. Uh, it gave people a purpose. It gave them something to focus on. And of course, it's a wonderful name, Victory Garden. So that's just something to share with you, you know, whether you want to start a garden or not, what can you focus on that would bring you something to look forward to at this time? A long-term project, a creative endeavor, something around your self-expression, something around what matters to you. What would give you a focal point that would lead to an eventual harvest or eventual satisfaction? And this would be a beautiful time to start something like that, whether it's a victory garden or not. Um, something that gives you a sense of practical purpose and is satisfying. You know, it's like everyone does daily routines differently, but I feel like there's something here that we're meant to tap into at an energetic level that reminds us of how we choose to spend our days. And how we choose to spend our days is, of course, how we choose to spend our life. So what choice can you make right now with this Taurus new moon to grow and develop something that you really enjoy and find meaningful? And that could be a beautiful way uh, to experience this new moon. Now, as the sun moves through Taurus, it is going to square Mars in Aquarius and it's also going to make a conjunction to Uranus in Taurus. Uh, we'll talk about this next week, but it also keeps things very dynamic, shall we say, because the energies are not settled right now. There's still a lot going on, and there's a lot of movement, a lot of movement right now, which is interesting when you think about being quarantined or in isolation. There's still a lot moving. So I feel like we're getting some messages right now to stay inspired, stay motivated, stay, it's like chin up, you know, chin up, look at the bigger picture, look at the future ahead, keep your eyes on the prize of what you want, because although there are restrictions and slowdowns, the energy of this next week, again, there's a lot of things that could connect or come through, um, the developments, the communications, new information, projects, inspirations, like there's movement here that we haven't had in a while. I also feel like there is an increase in communications and connections with galactic beings, that there are more openings right now as part of this new infusion into the body, okay? So going back to the sun's energy being higher and bringing new neutrinos into our our earth plane i feel like we're also opening up to new communications that we wouldn't normally receive or understand um, i feel so much energy in the galaxy right now like so many movements and um like connections and visitors and i feel like part of what's happening is that 
some people are really receptive now to a new vision or a new idea that they're receiving in a dream state. And it could be that you have a download or astral travel. Um, there's something that shows up through lucid dreaming. Um, there's so many ways this can come through. But it's almost like there's more people receiving higher intelligence in the dream state and it is then infusing what they're deciding and choosing and doing. And I don't have an example to give you specifically, but you know it when you feel it and it has an energy that literally feels out of this world, um, that feels like you went somewhere or you connected with something or you had a communication that you didn't quite understand. I'm just, I'm just getting the visual of these energies coming through as we sleep. Okay, but, but it's only when permission is granted. And so the permission is given by you if you want this. And it's honored in whatever way is necessary to be respectful of our energy and our boundaries. But I'm feeling like there's just more people getting some brand new downloads. Now these downloads are also showing up through new technologies. Okay, now I'm feeling the energy of Nikola Tesla. And I feel an excitement around Tesla's energy at what is transpiring. I've never connected with his energy before, by the way. Um, it's, it's electrifying, but it's also light. Like it has this like lightness to it where light is a feather or something. Like there's something about it that is not dense at all. And of course, he was way ahead of his time and his ideas were stolen and used for gain uh, by other individuals. And his energy feels different, like he's identifying it as Tesla, but he feels like a different, bigger soul. He's saying he's a whole soul tribe. He's a, he's a tribe of souls. And that it's part of this infusion, these downloads that are coming through. And it feels like there are messages that are being implanted around new probabilities that have always existed at the quantum level and it's coming through as some ideas and solutions for those of the right soul mission and vibration to carry them forward and offer them to the planet, offer them to the systems of of what's needed next. So it's very interesting because I'm feeling like it's um he's saying Tesla 2.0 and um he's not even worried about what was stolen previously. Um it's interesting. He's very like whatever. It's fine because it's going the light is going to win anyways. The the outcome is going to be positive for humanity anyways and even if it shifted timelines that's okay. So I'm feeling like this energy is giving assignments and I'm feeling younger kids on this. I'm actually thinking, um, seeing like a nine-year-old and then I'm seeing like teenagers and then, then I'm seeing adults too, um, that there are definitely 20s, 30s. Oh, okay. So he's saying every age bracket, every age bracket is going to receive what they need for solutions and he's also showing me that it's different for every continent um, like he's showing me the um, rolling blackouts in India and so there's different solutions that are needed there than would be needed in say Western Europe or in Australia so he's showing me that there's um, different solutions coming through and that he's excited there's a very excited electrifying energy here and he is closely associated with the energies of Uran Uranus and Taurus right now. And then he's saying, and Saturn and Aquarius. So that makes sense because Saturn and Aquarius, Aquarius being ruled by Uranus and Uranus. Okay, so there being this energetic connection here that gets stronger in 2021 
when Saturn and Jupiter are both in Aquarius. All right, so, okay. Now the other thing he just, this is totally unexpected. The other thing that he's hoping to rewire is 5G energies and AI. He's rubbing his hands together and he's like, I'm so excited to solve this and to work on the mechanics of this on the planet. So we'll see, right? But I feel like if we all hold the intention and vibration for where to direct 5G and where to direct artificial intelligence, we can do that. We can steer that ship and we are able to create other outcomes, potentials, and possibilities with our collective intention. So part of what is happening now, as all these energies are coming into the planet, as we're seeing this big flip, this big shift in paradigms, what we're needing to do is stay in that place of possibility. Okay, and he's saying to, to the anger is okay and the reactions are okay. He's like, but don't stay there. Go forward into how you visualize the energies going forward. And he's showing me it like a um, lightning strike and that the lightning strike can happen in various ways to invigorate different potentialities and developments. So it's kind of like, don't just give your power over to anything that's already been set up or established. All of this is in motion. He's like, all of this is like on the field and the game is in play. And the more that we uh, participate and understand the potentials, uh, the more exciting it's going to be. Also, okay, he's also saying that too many people have victim consciousness around their leaders and that the victim consciousness is through many lifetimes of programming, uh, through many experiences of, of royalty, of monarchs, of um, religious leaders, etc., and that we aren't even aware of our collective power at times. And he's saying that sometimes that anger or that reaction is rooted in a victim consciousness, whereas so many people can go, he's showing me like um, two domes and there's a dome that's the 3D matrix and then there's the 5D matrix. And he's like, if you just go up higher to the 5D matrix, then you can energetically be in control of the 3D matrix. And he's showing me as like, if you go higher, you will then infuse the 3D matrix with a whole other energy that isn't even possible to create at the 3D level. So that's what we're supposed to remember is that the higher we go with these levels of awareness, He's like, then you're also tapping into the higher intelligence energies and technologies of the ETs. And he's like, that's really where the solutions are for 5G is with the um, alien technology or intelligence. He's like, it's, it's literally out of this world because what you're looking to do is to go higher and advance these technologies beyond what you've even realized is possible because it's not possible at a human consciousness level. So, okay, so the story is coming together. There are higher level beings, higher intelligence, supporting Earth's transformation right now, bringing in the ideas, solutions, and energies to various people all around the world on multiple continents of multiple demographics and age groups to contribute to the advancements of these technologies, like nothing is settled, nothing's set in stone. So, so don't think that it is what it is. It's still very fluid. It's still very exciting and innovative, but it's requiring a higher intelligence that most people haven't tapped into. So this is part of the cosmic consciousness that's infusing, infusing the planet. And that part of what we have to tap into is that trust and knowingness that the earth is supported um, and that we have allies. We have allies helping us at this time and we have allies supporting the transformation. Uh, and he says, this is not about the Anunnaki. This is not about whatever they want or whatever uh, they believe we should do. Um, it's not even about their earth as their colony. It's about what the humans are allowing in their home turf. 
And this is where the energy is very exciting. And my head is spinning right now, I have to tell you. Uh, my crown chakra is spinning. And so I'm going to need to ground myself a little better here. And I'm looking at the clock and I do need to wind up this episode. So this was quite fascinating, not at all what I thought I would be discussing, but quite exciting that again, these new energies are coming through and coming forward. Um, this is a reminder to stay open to what's possible, to not feel too heavy by what is shifting and changing in the world. Um, and to understand that there's a much bigger cycle of energy coming through, coming in, that we're wildly supported, and that it's actually a very exciting time as the planet shifts permanently and we move into a whole new reality that could even be better than what we ever thought. So keep that in your mind too, that as things move and shift, it could be going to an even better place. To quote the wisdom of Rumi, do not worry that your life is turning upside down. How do you know that the side you are used to is better than the one to come? So with that in mind, friends, I wish you a beautiful week ahead. I hope you have some rising, energizing developments in your life. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this podcast as we travel through this very dynamic time together. You can find out more about me at mollymccord.online or over at consciouscoolchic.com. And in the meantime, have a beautiful day and a beautiful new moon on April 22nd. I'll see you back here very soon. Thank you.